This tutorial will demonstrate how to calculate z-scores and then how to use those z-scores to determine probabilities of occurrence. So very often we're asked, we're given a z-score and we're asked to determine the percentile rank of that particular z-score. You may be asked to determine the range of scores or the percentage of scores that might occur between a range of z-scores. Or it might be asked to figure out a percentage of scores that might fall above or below a particular z-score. So we're going to use SPSS to calculate z-scores for a given set of data. And then we'll go through some examples of how we use the unit normal table or the z-distribution table to determine probabilities for a couple different uh, examples. So first let's calculate the z-scores for this set of data. And this is mostly just to demonstrate how to get the z-scores. And we'll use some other data for some of our examples. So here we have some quantitative data labeled as IQ score. In order to get the z-scores for this raw data, we need to go to Descriptive Statistics under the Analyze menu, and then choose Descriptives. We need to choose the variable we're interested in, in this case IQ score, and move it over to the Variables box. <clears throat> and then we need to check this box that's labeled Save Standardized Values as Variables. And what this is going to do is take these raw IQ scores, and it's going to standardize them and create z-scores for each of the raw scores. So we click that box, and we click OK, and we need to go back to the data view in order to actually see the z-scores. So I'll click the star button, and here we see the z-scores next to their corresponding raw scores. So for example, having an IQ score of 110 is equivalent to a z-score of positive 0.3. An IQ score of 160 is equivalent to a z-score of positive 1.98, and so on. So remember, the closer a score is to zero, the closer that score is to the mean of all the values. So uh, if we had a mean score of, or a score of 100, we've got a z-score of 0 0.03, which means it's, it's very close to the mean. Okay, now let's talk about how we can use these z-scores, because that's usually what's going to end up happening, is we want to be able to, to take a raw score, convert it to a z-score, and then talk about how it relates to all the other scores in a distribution. You know, the mean tells us, okay, if you have the mean, you can either be above or below the mean. Um, but what the z-score allows us to do is, is to determine how far above or below a score might be from the mean. It also can help us determine the percentile rank for that score. We can also use it to then make predictions as to how likely it is someone might score or have a score above or below our particular z-score we're interested in. We can also determine the probability of having how many scores are going to occur between a boundary of two z-scores. So let's talk a little bit about that. So when we're dealing with these z-score problems, determining these normal probabilities of z, um, we want to use a four-step approach to, to try and figure out the probabilities associated with certain z-scores. So first of all, we want to state the problem. We want to indicate or determine what it is we're trying to determine. Are we trying to find the pro probability for a single z-score? Are we trying to find the probabilities above or below a certain z-score? Or are we trying to find the percent of scores that fall between a certain boundary of two z-scores? Then, if it already hasn't been done, we want to standardize the raw scores into z-scores. It is very useful and highly recommended to then draw a normal bell curve and then sketch out what it is you're trying to accomplish. So if you're trying to find where a certain z-score falls on the normal curve as far as its percentile rank, then we can draw that out. If we're trying to figure out how many scores fall below or above a certain z-score, we can draw that out. We're trying to find the range of or the percentage of scores between a range of z-scores, then we can draw that out. This will help you visualize it. This will help you make sure the numbers you're getting make sense. Um, it will also help you be able to kind of double check whether or not the number you came up with, the outcome you came up with, the percent or the percentile rank, fits in with what the normal bell curve represents. Okay, then the last step is to take the z-score that, that we've calculated, or z-scores we've calculated, 
use the normal table, the unit normal table, to then determine what probabilities they are associated with. All right, so let's go through some, some really basic examples first of all. So when we're thinking about the normal bell curve, okay, again, it's got its normal bell shape. The center of the bell curve, the line that bisects the bell curve from left to right, that is the mean, and that is also associated with a z-score of zero. So when we talk about probabilities of certain z-scores occurring, if I had a z-score of zero, that would mean that score is at the 50th, per 50th percentile. Half the scores will be above it, half the scores will be below it. So when we think about that, we think about this curve, this area under the curve is, constitutes 100% of all the possible scores. We then use that z-score of zero, the midpoint is the anchor. And we're generally talking about what percentage of scores will either fall above or below either the mean or a particular z-score. So for example, when we're trying to determine what percentage of scores might fall between a range of two individual z-scores, we have a couple strategies that we can employ to figure out what that percentage might be. Again, a z-score of zero represents the 50th percentile. So 50% of scores will be below it, 50% will be above it. So one strategy for this is if I wanted to know the percentage of scores that fall between these two z-scores, one thing I can do is first of all find out what percentage of scores fall below the A score. And again, I could use my Z's table, which I'll show you in a minute, to determine what percentage of scores fall below A or to the left of A. I can then figure out what percentage of scores fall to the left of B or below B. I can then subtract A from B, those, those probabilities or percentages, and that will then give me the percentage of scores that fall between those two scores. So we're trying to find this chunk of the curve. If we know how many scores fall on this side of, the, of that chunk of the curve, and how many scores fall to this side of the z-score for that chunk of the curve, we just subtract those two scores, and now we have the center. Again, to illustrate how that works, if I wanted to know how many scores fell below the z-score of zero, well I know it cuts it in half. Half of it falls below, half of it falls above. 100 minus 50 is 50. So using that logic makes it a lot easier to try and, and work through some of these problems as far as figuring out um, what percentage of z-score or what percentage of scores fall below or above a particular z-score. So let's go with one of the, let's talk about one of the simpler problems first. And that might be, if I'm given a particular z-score, what percentile rank might that z-score have? Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to switch screens here, and we're going to go to the unit normal table. Now, this unit normal table looks a little bit different than some of the others you may have seen, but I find this one to be ex much easier to use than some of the other textbook, um, other textbook versions that are out there. Again, and using this schematic will help you visualize what it is we're trying to do. So again, here's the normal bell curve drawn out um, in various configurations. So if I want to know the percentile rank of a particular positive z-score, I know that the majority of the curve is going to fall below that z-score. And I know a minority of that curve is going to fall above. We refer to the majority of the curve falling below a z-score is the body, and the minority of the scores falling above a particular z-score is the tail. When we're working with a negative z-score, we basically flip-flop that. So the tail will be falling below the particular z-score we're interested in, and the body will be falling above. Okay, so let's go, let's, let's try something simple. Let's say we have a particular z-score, and that z-score is 1.0 and we want to know what percentile rank that z-score is. So what we need to do is we need to figure out then what percentage of scores fall below that z-score of 1.0, what percentage of scores are in the body, because that's again what the percentile rank represents, is how many scores fall below or conversely above. 
So if I want to know the percentile rank, I need to figure out what percentage of scores fall in the body. Okay, so I'm going to go into my table. And again, these columns are labeled. So the second column, or the first column represents the z-score you're working with. The B column represents the proportion of scores in the body, and then the C column represents the proportion of scores that might be in the tail. So again, here's a z-score of zero that splits the distribution in half. So 50% will be in the body, 50% will be in the tail. Now what column D tells us can also be pretty useful for us. It tells us what proportion of scores might fall between a given z-score and the mean. So if I have this positive z-score and I want to know how many scores fall between it and the mean, I can use column D to tell me that very quickly. Okay, so let's go back to our problem of, of a z-score of 1.0. So let's go down the table to find that z-score of 1.0. Okay, and here it is right here, 1.0. So Looking at the column B, we know that 84% of all scores are going to fall below column B. We also know that about 15 or 16% of all scores will fall above or in the tail from a z-score of 1.0. So the percentile rank then of a score of 1.0 is 84, 84%, the 84th percentile. Okay. Now to double check yourself, Again, if you've drawn a picture of that, it can be fairly easy to, easy to visualize. If this represents a z-score of plus 1, then it looks like the majority of scores fall below it. So that could be 84% of the curve, and this could represent 16%. Visually, that makes sense. Okay, another way to double-check yourself is, again, here's that z-score of plus 1. We know that this side of the curve the left side of the curve represents 50%. If we can then find out how what percentage of scores fall between the mean and our z-score of plus 1, and then add that to the 50%, that should equal the same as what we got if we use this method. So let's go back down to that z-score of 1.0. Okay. And here's the proportion between a z-score of 1.0 and the mean, 34%. If we add 50% to that, that gives us 84%. Okay, so that's another way you can double check yourself. Now let's try uh, another example in which we're working with a negative z-score. Okay, and we may want to know what percentage of scores fall below that negative z-score. So what percentage of scores fall in the tail? relative to a negative z-score. So let's use a z-score, a negative z-score of, let's say, minus 0.5. And again, this table doesn't differentiate between negative or positive because it doesn't have to. Remember, the two sides of the curve are mirror images, so the proportions will be the same on either side of the curve, whether you're talking about negative or positive. So let's say we want to know what percentage of scores fall in the tail relative to a z-score of minus 0.5. So let's find, my, let's find 0.5 on our table. And again, it doesn't matter uh, if it's positive or negative here. So here's 0.5, and using column C, we can determine that the proportion of scores that fall below a z-score of 0.5 is 0.30. So let's go back to our picture to double check that. Okay, here's our z-score of minus 0.5 the smaller percentage should fall below it in the tail, and 0.30 is a smaller percentage compared to what this probably is. Okay, so again, that's a way to double check ourselves when we do these kinds of examples. Now the last type of example we can go through is if when we want to find the percentage of scores that fall between a range of z-scores. So if I've got one z-score, z-score number one and z-score number two, how can I determine what percentage of scores will fall between those two? Okay, and let's go through an actual example of how we would do that. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. So here's, here's our example. So let's say we want to know, and again, we state our problem first of all, um, what percentage of athletes return to play uh, after they've had an ACL reconstruction, how many of them return between 35 and 40 weeks? 
Well, in order to make this easier, and if we have a situation in which we want to standardize scores, we can easily standardize 35 and 40, the raw scores, into a z-score. So using our z-score formula, as you see here, here's the, and we know the mean of all athletes is 39, and the standard deviation is 2. So we plug those numbers into the z-score formula. So a raw score of 40 weeks is equivalent to a z-score of positive 0.5. A raw score of 35 weeks is equivalent to a z-score of minus 2.0. So what we want to know is how many athletes or how many scores will fall between these two z-scores of positive 0.5 and negative 2.0. So that's what we're trying to do. So we want to draw a picture of what it is we're trying to accomplish. So again, here's our normal bell curve. Here's our z-score of positive 0.5. Here's our z-score of minus 2.0. So we're trying to find what percentage of scores fall in this middle region. Okay. What we can do is go to the unit normal table, find the percentile rank, or find the percentage of scores that fall below or in the body, I'm sorry, in the tail, correct myself, the body of 0.5. So again, this represents the larger portion of the curve, so we want to know what percentage of scores fall in the body relative to 0.5, and that would be 69%, 0.6915. Then, we want to have a negative z-score, so we want to know what percentage of scores fall in the tail relative to that z-score of 2.0. And going to our unit normal table, we can find that the value there is 0 0.022. So now, in order to find the middle ground between those two scores, we basically subtract the probability for our positive z-score. I'm sorry, we, we take our positive z-score, and from it, we subtract the probability associated with our negative z-score, 0.69 minus 0 0.022. And that gets us to... 0.66. So about 66% of all athletes then are going to have a recovery time that's going to fall between 35 and 40 weeks. So again, to summarize, when you're trying to use z-scores to determine probabilities, we need to first state the problem, figure out what it is you're trying to accomplish as far as finding the probability of, of a single z-score, like a percentile rank, trying to find the portion of the curve that falls above or below a certain z-score, or are you trying to find a portion of the curve that falls between two z-scores? You then need to either calculate your z-scores or consult z-scores uh, from an SPSS output, okay, and convert those and have those z-scores available. Sketch out what you're trying to accomplish, so put your values onto a sketch of the normal curve so you can visualize what you're trying to accomplish. Use the unit normal table to match those z-scores up with a given probability. And then if you need to do some further arithmetic uh, in order to find the range of uh, possibilities between two scores, then you can do that and come to the conclusion. So this technique or these techniques, and again there are several different ways to accomplish this. I've shown you one way to figure out some of these values, but there's more than one way to do that. Um, again, going back to our unit normal table, we've got these three columns of information about each z-score, which we can then use to determine all three of these types of questions.